previously on Dual Destinies. You intend to cross-examine an orca? Let the orca take the stand. Bring the parrot to the stand. <laughs> Alright, here goes my testimony! Okay, so where were we? How Orla was manipulated. Well, first he came in and played the song. But it was the song that told me to jump up in the air and crash into a human. And how am I supposed to do that? I don't really know, you know? Anyway, see you later! Wait, one more thing. I love you all! What? What?! Also, I'm an animal, so my what's count towards the what counter. <laughs> Mr. Wright? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> Do you seriously intend to cross-examine this orca? Well, she's a key witness for the defense after all, sir. How in the world are we gonna do this? Every time you come to my courtroom, you open my eyes to a new way of thinking. It appears this will be another one of those times. Yes, he's given me the go-ahead. I'd now like to put the witness and Mr. Rhymes together to see how he manipulated the orca. Hopefully, Orla will have some kind of reaction. Hmm. Ah, fine by me, but not what happened, I tell you. Who do you think you're talking to? Holy shit, you got big! Mr. Rhymes was right. Nothing happened. I guess I shouldn't have expected it to be easy. Hmm, how did he manipulate her? Would you like some help, Mr. Wright? I could probably help you out here. I hope you realize that if you can't prove how Rhymes manipulated the orca with this cross-exam, your defendant will be declared guilty immediately. Well, why are you trying to, like, egg me on here? Yes, I realize that. This is my last chance. I have to figure out how Rhymes commanded Orla to do her tricks. Please begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> okay, how Orla was manipulated. What did I say last time? I don't really remember, but now you're making me repeat it, so... Press me! Hold it, Orla. <laughs> Miss Shipley, I'm afraid Fweet 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 is not going to get us anywhere. Oh my god, isn't that what he said to the parrot? <laughs> this is your plan of action. Oh my god, man. I gotta go talk to Edgeworth about this. There is no way. Uh, actually, Edgeworth wasn't the prosecutor for that trial. It was Von Karma. Anyway. If you are incapable of interpreting orca speech, this entire exercise is funny. You leave the interpretation of Orla's heart to me. Alright, girl, what you got to say? Let me hear it. What, you want me to hear it again? You want me to say it a third time? You gotta be kidding me. Oh, Orla, you're so cute! Uh, huh. <laughs> right, Dono, surely you don't intend to continue this farce. I do, Miss Shipley. Please continue with your testimony. Alright, uh, oh, which part am I on? Oh, that part, yeah, 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 this part, okay. Uh, what do you want to hear? Could you interpret that for the court, Miss Sykes? <laughs> oh my god, are you seriously going to translate that? I'm getting a strong reading of happiness. Maybe she thinks she's doing a show. <laughs> no way. I demand serious witness testimony. This is no time for fun and games. If you continue this mockery, I will subject you to 40 lashes with a wet fish. Yeah. Not a wet noodle? That just sounds fishy. <laughs> hey, speaking from experience, anything is better than 40 lashes from a whip. Oh my god, nice. The defense will please caution its witness to conduct herself with propriety. Okay, did you hear that? Propriety? What the fuck are you talking about? Wait a minute, wait a minute, no, go back, go back. Yeah, this one. There we, here we go. Ugh. Uh, instead of impersonating a one orca band, could you show us the lifesaver trick? I guess Orla won't do what you want unless you give her the proper signal. Ooh, doesn't Orla sing beautifully? Taka singing voice is much more melodic and clear. Oh uh, yeah, that, that is a beautiful sound, I think so. I, I never noticed how beautiful it was until Cobra Kai, of all things. Now, sorry I keep bringing that up, I just love that show, but anyway. Please continue your testimony, Miss Shipley. Neither one should quit their day job, he said. Okay, is this the last one? I think this is the last one. Go ahead. Miss Shipley seems to want to communicate something. Yeah, you damn right I want to communicate! I really wish that I could do this all the time! But apparently I can only do it when Tim's here, so... Perhaps she's hungry? I'm hungry?! <laughs> Miss Faye, can you give Miss Shipley a snack? Yeah, I'm making the Chips Ahoy! Two of them, in fact! 
Oh, no, 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 the fish, man. Stop, I get so sick of these fish. What a heartwarming scene. It reminds me of my granddaughter with her pet. Wow, your granddaughter must have a pretty large pet. <laughs> Stop all this pet prattle and get on with the cross-examination. I'm not gonna get on the cross-examination? Holy shit, wait a minute. Well, she's such an adorable creature. I never get tired of looking at her. Silence. I, on the other hand, have had more than my fill of this top foolery. Enough is enough. Sounds like Prosecutor Blackwell is about to blow his top. <laughs> I blow my top if you want me to. What should I do? Should I continue the cross examination? Uh, oh god, did I save? Well, I did save it like in between things, but I'll go ahead and save right here too. Uh, I, I pressed all of them. I kind of felt maybe I should stop here. I'm done playing games. I will now explain how Orla was manipulated by Mr. Rhymes. In order to respond to a command, Orla needs to hear the sound of a whistle. But Mr. Rhymes isn't a trainer. I doubt he'd know how to give the signals himself. So that means he must have had help. So how did Mr. Rhymes issue commands to Orla? Um. Well, I mean, we just said he doesn't know how to use the whistle. But what we have here, Summers' boyfriend has videos of her using a whistle to make the orca do tricks. So maybe... Did somebody also say, was that this that they were talking about, though, when they said it can also make sounds that humans can't hear? Either way, this has got to be it. Sasha told me an interesting story about Miss Summers. <laughs> Azra used to send her boyfriend videos of herself teaching the orca tricks. I used to help Azra take the videos on her TV phone. Most likely, Mr. Rhymes still has these videos of Miss Summers. Miss Faye, could I ask for your help? Of course, Mr. Nick. What is it? You're using Mr. Rhymes' TV phone, correct? I'd like you to examine it for me. Please look for videos of Azra Summers issuing whistle, com issuing, issuing whistle commands to Orla. Jeez. Videos? But I'll have to stop broadcasting to look through them. <laughs> My apologies to Marlon. Eh, he's okay. Roy Jono, what are you up to? You'll see in a moment. Pearls could find those videos for me. So you're gonna find those videos? I deleted them! Mr. Nick, I found them! Oh, damn it! I found some videos like you described. You did? Thank you, Miss Faye. Thought they'd fall for my bluff, but I guess not. How did Marlon Rhymes get Orla to do those tricks? I will now show you. Dun, 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 dun. His cell phone? Are you implying he used an app? Do you even know what an app is? Miss Faye, uh, see if you can issue Orla a command. Me? Can I do such a thing? Go ahead, nobody will suspect anything, I'll just do something stupid! You might be able to if you play a video with a whistle signal in it. Sorry if I'm overdoing it with a whale voice, that's just too much fun. Every time I see him, I want to do it. Like, if there's a video of the lifesaver trick, please play that. Before you do, though, please put the practice dummy in the pool. I was gonna say, like, we need to be able to have yeah, somebody to do it on. No, no, do it on me! The practice dummy, alright. Do it, Pearl. In it goes. There, it sank to the bottom. You think I'm gonna fall for that? Now I'll play. A, now I'll play a video. Oh, that's my cue. Here I go. Orla's is diving down, heading straight for the dummy. Here you go. Huh, man, that was fun. I'd never get tired of doing that. He, <laughs> what a smart girl you are, Orla. And now you see. Now you see. The lifesaver trick was a complete success, Mr. Nick. Thank you, Miss Faye. You were a big help. Now I have proof. I have proof! <laughs> Unbelievable. You actually pulled it off. That was the lifesaver trick we saw yesterday. Is Miss Faye an orca trainer now? <laughs> no, nobody is. No, Your Honor, I'll explain after we try one more trick. Now let's see if we can command Orla to do the singing trick. Oh, please don't ask me to sing! Miss Faye, if there's a video of the singing trick, please play that. No, don't play that! <laughs> She's gonna play it. Certainly. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Is it this video? God, please don't! I'm sailing away! Oh. Set an open course! For the virgin sea! 
Cause I got to be free. Oh, I told you you didn't want to play that one. Oh, boy, isn't she wonderful? That was the Swashbuckler Spectacular song. No, it wasn't. That was Come Sail Away by Styx. But okay, I, I am losing my mind over here. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what a lovely singing voice. Huh. It wasn't bad. <laughs> wow, even he liked it. By the way, how did Miss Faye give the orc of those commands? Waiting just for me! Marlon Rhymes had something on his phone that his girlfriend, Ezra Summers, sent him. Their videos of Miss Summers issuing commands to Orla with a whistle. If they have Orla listen to the sounds of the signals, anyone at all could command Orla. Oh my, anyone at all? Including Mr. Jackass over here. All they have to do is play those videos. Well, I believe that settles it then, doesn't it? Please submit those videos as evidence. <laughs> sure, I'll just let Pearl drive him over here on her tricycle. Okay. Miss Faye, could you send those videos to the TV phone here? Alright, certainly. It'd be easier if I just put them on YouTube, though, right? Well, that's right, YouTube would compress the audio, and then you wouldn't be able to hear the sounds anymore, so never mind. Aww. He's so sweet. Sounds like a Pikachu. Aww. So this was a training session a year ago, huh? But wait a minute. There's something about that song that bothers me. TV phone updated in the court record. Oh my god. Uh, is this gonna be like... Okay, because earlier Miss Plume was singing that other song. And saying, well, that's the song. But then there's like two different songs that the whale sings too, I think, now, because he's saying that song was different. So that means Marlon Rhymes could have manipulated the creature. Yup. Arr! Mr. Reed, you can't talk your way out of it now. Uh, talk to the hand. I have to commend you. That was very good proof. I concede Marlon Rhymes could have manipulated the orca. But isn't it true that the defendant could have done it as well? All she would have to do is use the whistle, the whistle she knows how to use so well. And she wouldn't have had to use those videos. Surely you admit it's a possibility. So is it going to come up eventually, this thing with the whistle that says she can't do two tricks at once? We haven't had to use that yet. But like, every time I look at evidence, I see it, so I'm like, it's going to come up eventually. It is a possibility she could have easily had Normandy Plume witness the singing in the lifesaver trick. So he's trying to argue it's equally possible for Sasha as it was for Rhymes, is he? But is that true? Let me think about that for a minute. Are we doing this now, though? That's right, those weren't just simple cries, it was singing! As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing! It kept headbutting while it sang- Oh, no, no, it did not. It did not. The culprit made sure Mr. Plume heard the song and saw the lifesaver trick. Could Sasha have shown these two tricks to the witness? No, she could not have. No, I don't think Miss Buckler could have created the same conditions as the culprit. Oh, you think you think you got me. You think you do, but you don't. You challenged me to a battle. I hope your sword is strong. Let me see those sword skills of yours. Don't you worry, my sword is drawn and ready. Oh, you better believe it. I got one HP, I don't give a shit. My sword is evidence that two tricks couldn't have been- Oh, wait, oh, no, you made it too easy now saying that. Oh. Then all you have to do is match it up to the description and the evidence. Of course, that's basically all you have to do anyway, most of the time. Misty Plume said in her testimony that she witnessed these two tricks at the same time. However, that fact is inconsistent with how Orla performs tricks. How Orla performs tricks? What are you talking about? I'm talking about how I'm a year older now, I can't do the two at the same time. Maybe before I could! Orla can't perform two tricks at once. She performs only one trick per whistle signal. That's how she's been trained. Hmm. In other words, it would be just like with a dog. If you tell him to both sit and shake, he won't do them at the same time. Am I understanding it correctly? Yeah, that's the idea, Your Honor. I wonder if the judge has a dog. Maybe someday we'll find out. In spirit of justice, though. No. <laughs> 
I would laugh so hard if he actually had a dog and it was revealed in that game. Anyway, he's laughing. What a foss. Not to be confused with a fart, which I'm not going to do right now because I did it before. So are you saying that the witness somehow managed to produce an impossible scenario? Aw, oh, if the creature's own trainer couldn't do it, how could I? Yes, it's a mystery, isn't it? But boss, you don't have to agree so cheerfully. Yeah, well... The defense is claiming that Marlon Ryan's manipulated the Orca, but if you cannot explain fully how this was done, your argument doesn't hold water. So come on with it, man. What you got? If you can't straighten out your own theory, would you like me to straighten you out? No, I don't want you to come in half either. Hmm. So Orla can't do two tricks at a time, but Misty Plume saw her do it. This logical inconsistency means there's a flaw somewhere. Was Misty Plume lying? Or is it not true that Orla can't do two tricks at a time? But Misty Plume had no reason to lie about such a thing. If it really is impossible for Orla to perform two tricks at once, then maybe either the lightsaber trick or the singing trick was... faked? Oh no! You mean as in... like, taking a recording of the whale singing and playing it out over the speakers? Maybe Orla only performed one of the tricks. But it was made to look like she performed two. Silence. Alright. There's a lot of silence in this one. Maybe. How do you expect to conduct a sword battle with conjecture? Sounds like I'd better present some evidence here, and fast. Although I am concerned about your profuse sweating, Mr. Wright, allow me to ask you. Allow me to save. I only do this when I'm down to 1 HP like this. Actually, I guess technically it's 2 HP, but... Oh, good timing on that one. Which of the two was faked? The, or which, which of the two was faked? The lifesaver or the singing? They were both faked? No, I think it was just the song. That would be easy to fake. The defense wishes to argue that the singing trick was faked. And on what grounds do you base your assertion that the singing trick was faked? Oh... Uh, let's see, issued all aquarium separate communication it can barely also be used to broadcast inside the aquarium. That's my first thought, but let me just look through real quick and make sure. The phone we've already used, but, but that there just said broadcast, so it doesn't get much more simple than that. I will take my chances. Take that. that item proves the singing trick was faked? No, Your Honor. This piece of evidence will not prove that. In other words, this piece of evidence is a fake-out! And if this evidence is a fake-out, then the singing trick was a fake-out as well. I think I just died. Boss, I don't think that makes any sense. Momentum is key at times like these. I can hear every word you're saying, Mr. Wright, and you're dead now. Phoenix Wright is dead! I guess they're gonna kill me! Darn it, Phoenix Wright, you were supposed to get me off the hook here! The defense's case is insufficient to overturn the prosecution claims. This court finds the defendant, Sasha Buckler, guilty! Congratulations! That was a good save. That was a good time to save. Try again. Where's it gonna put me if I say that? Well, let's open the doors back. Wait a minute. Everybody get back in here. We're not done yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious where it's gonna put me. Probably my last save point, though, right? And on what grounds do you base your assertion that the singing... It just fills up my life? It totally fills up my life! Okay. So I guess the other thing could be... This, the show song on the video, is different from the one you flew heard. But that's like people singing, not the whale, so... Unless that's somehow relevant here, I don't really see. I mean, I don't see anything else in here that remotely even pertains to music at all, except for... Except for this. I mean, I got full HP now, so we can try stuff. This is gonna be really weird if this... This is a recording of a recent... Okay. Alright, now you got me really interested here. In this recording, Orla sings the same song she sang for Miss Faye earlier. But Misty Plume said the song is different from the one sang a year ago. So I guess the whale's just singing the melody of the song, not necessarily the lyrics, obviously. It's, you know... The song is different. Please listen to the song in the video from a year ago sent to this cell phone.
every girl's crazy about a shop dressed man. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't resist. Hmm, yes, it sounds quite different from the song Orla sang for Miss Faye earlier. And yet this is the same video Miss Faye used to issue the command to Orla to sing. Huh. By having Misty Plume listen to the song recorded in the cell phone video, the true culprit made Misty Plume think Orla was singing the song from a year ago. That's why she thought the song was wrong. Only Marlon Rhymes, the owner of the cell phone videos, could have done this. Silence. Oh, not so fast, though. But Misty Plume said she heard the orca singing right in front of her. How do you claim he made her think that? How was the song recording played? Oh, maybe now the walkie-talkie. I tend to explain that too, of course. What? The answer lies somewhere in the orca pool visitor's corridor. The corridor. The speakers. Yeah. Over here. Direct your eyes to this direction, sir. Misty Plume heard the song while she was in the Orca Pool Visitor's Corner. There's a speaker in that corner, so the visitors can hear the orca sounds. And you claim the song was played from that speaker. How? With luck. <laughs> Here's how Rhymes played the song with the speaker in the visitor's corner. Okay, here we go. Boom. Mr. Rhymes could broadcast the song in the video to the speaker by using a walkie-talkie. And he could get Orla to do a trick by letting her hear Miss Summer's whistle signal, too. Man, I never thought it was going to come to that. That this would be what we were talking about. At some point or at any point. Ugh. All this was the doing of the true culprit, Marlon Rhymes. God, That's three times now you slashed me! This is what you did, isn't it, Mr. Rhymes? Yes, you did! Yes, you did! Yes, you did, Brett! Arr. You tended, and we can save both Sasha and Orla. Just leave it to Captain Wright's swashbuckling Lawrence to win any case. I don't remember agreeing to that name. <laughs> so it actually was possible for Mr. Rhymes to manipulate the Orca. I'm stunned. I see we will need to hear more from this witness. More? <laughs> Mr. Rhymes, the time has come for you to tell the court the truth. So out with it, man. Out with it already. Uh-oh, what is it? Is it Edgeworth? Oh, man. That's a weird pose. <laughs> chomp, 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 chomp! Oh my god. So I used a walkie-talkie, you say? Ah, Sorry, but you're dead wrong, me bucko. It'd be impossible, says I. Well, what do you mean, impossible? I shall sing you a little shanky diss in your scurvy theory. Hockey well now. Oh my god. It's all about the pentiums. Yeah, it's all about the pentiums. Yeah. Holy shit. Now that's what I call a testimony, my man. Here we go again with that flip-flop music. That was not flip-flop. That was not... That was... Man. Broken. How about flimsy excuses? Bilge sucking. That was uncalled for. You probably broke it on purpose after the fact, you piece of shit. No. <laughs> ah, that'd be untrue, you little lassie. Although I can't prove when it really was. Lucky be for me. You lawyers be the ones who had the proven to do. Well, that's so. But unlucky for you, we can do it. After everything we've uncovered, he still won't admit it. Somehow I have to prove that he still could have done it. Cross-examination. Man, look at him go. Jeez. Oh, He's bothering me. <laughs> Make me very uncomfortable. Oh my god. Yo, walkie talkie P broke for real. Mr. Lawrence freestyle got no appeal. Mr. Rhymes, are you sure it was your walkie talkie that was broken? Of course I'd be sure. Although it doesn't have me name written on or anything. But you can't prove it not be me walk talking now, can you? I'll never save Sasha this way. I have to figure out how he got a command to Orla. If Rhymes couldn't get a command to the Orca, your theory crumbles. Everything you've done will all go up in smoke. I'd be not all on the prosecution's side neither, mind ye. The defendant be innocent, says I. But either way, me walkie talkie was broken and that be the truth. Man, 
Oh, this is like the best animation yet of anybody in the game. This is so good. This is detail is uh, out just outrageous. It's outrageous. Broke before the plume on the scene, broke before a rock could ever dream. So it would seem. Do you have some way of proving that statement? Silence. <laughs> I got nothing on me right now. Burden of proof is on you. No, actually, it's on you, but hey. Well, actually, I guess it is on me because I'm sort of prosecuting him now. In a sense, you know. If you can't do that, then we can end this cross-examination right now. Hmm. Screw this fish. Ho, yo, 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 ho, ho. I just, I'm just not even gonna read this because the music's too good. And it's not, really, but... Man. Pain and shame. Wow. Uh, don't quit your day job. Oh, he makes me so mad. We gotta come up with our own freestyle, boss. Man, I'd like to do that. Let's get him back with evidence instead, shall we? No singing. Witness, please continue your testimony about the walkie-talkie. Alright. Legit goop during clean time, I but built sucking Lori spitting lies. Yeah, Phoenix was mad about this one. You made a big blunder. What happened? After I helped Sasha with the clean, I dropped it by accident and broke it. You wish to see it? I still have it with me. Oh, mm -hmm. does indeed appear to be broken. Heh <laughs> it's with me walkie-talkie broken? There'd be no way I could have done what you said. Yeah, but you could have broken it since then. You know, like just now. Oh, your walkie-talkie broke. Isn't that just so convenient? Good one. Mr. Rhymes, I think you broke it on purpose. Miss Lloyd, none of your false accusations, if you please. I broke it on purpose. Where be your proof? I don't know, I'll find it. I don't have any proof. It's just what I think happened. If his walkie-talkie was broken, it throws a monkey wrench into my whole theory. When he let Pearls borrow his cell phone so casually yesterday, he must have already been confident I wouldn't be able to prove anything. Ha ha, y'all never gonna get me to agree that Puck's dog will be innocent. Puck's... Puck's head? If something be that if something be not done about her, she'll get Sasha one day too. You all could kill the captain, it won't be. Ugh. Hmm. So you intend to continue the claim that the defendant is innocent, do you? But I won't stand for that. Now then, Roy Tono, what's your next move? This is a weird situation we're in because like this witness does not want Like he believes the defendant's innocent too, and yet he's a prosecution witness. It's like Ugh. Your Honor, I would like to examine that walkie-talkie, if you don't mind. Certainly. Here you are. Alright. Let's see if there's any way to tell when the walkie-talkie was broken. If he gave Orla that command, then it couldn't have been broken at the time. That's what I'm thinking. This is probably... Tap and slide on the bottom screen to rotate the evidence. Tap again if you notice anything of interest. You can also zoom in and out to get a better look. Now, let's check every last instrument for anything off. Let's see. Oops, no, I wasn't trying to click there. Walkie-talkie shaped like a sword, pretty clever, but I don't see anything odd. The sword walkie-talkie in and of itself is pretty odd, I guess. Let's keep checking it out. Oh, hello! Um... <laughs> no, 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 we'll definitely check out another spot here. Oh, this thing is very sensitive. Oh, okay, it's on, it's on the screen, so there we go. <laughs> I thought I had to drag over to it like you do with examining other stuff. Look at these, they look like tooth marks. Hey, you're right. A bite this big. I wonder if it was Orla. I can only imagine. Whoever did the bite also was missing a tooth. Wait, a walkie-talkie with tooth marks? Didn't we hear a story like that just yesterday? No, refresh the file my memory. It was a walkie-talkie after I used right for his whole death. In the middle of the show, the orca brought Azra up to the surface in her mouth. She left tooth marks in Azra's walkie-talkie. The captain said he always kept that walkie-talkie with him so he'd never forget. Uh-huh. Rhyme said this walkie-talkie was his, but could it be? Heh, <laughs> not not about it, don't you agree? Ah, time to give it up, Mr. Lawyer. Forget the orca, just play Sasha, says I. I'm afraid I can't do that. Now that I'm finally a lawyer again, <laughs> after eight years of... How could I hold my head up high if I made a client so miserable? Ah, a stubborn one you be. Uh, 
I know, I'm stubborn. Oh, right back to it, here we are. That Orkyo don't listen to me, okay? Kill the cat, the so cray cray. Man. There could have been some other way besides the walkie-talkie to issue the command. Silence. Actually, they probably couldn't. Um, huh. Well, actually, maybe. Yes, the Orca could have received a signal from the defendant's whistle. Is this the point you are trying to concede? Objection. Not really. No, that's not what I'm saying. Some other way besides the whistle. Freestyle drive-by. Wow. I tell you, be all that orca's doing. If you don't belay all this bilge, I'd diss you with some rap. Uh, I believe you've already been doing that. <laughs> I tried pressing it, but it didn't change anything. Oh, I don't know about that. The statements might not have changed, but the meaning of one of them may have. Really? You caught something? That one statement just might be the breakthrough we need. Huh. Interesting. Is this one of those where I have to press something twice? Uh, I could try this one again, maybe? I don't think it's the third one, so... Are you sure it was your walkie-talkie? I still the broke walkie-talkie or something. It's not letting me skip here. Hang on. If you be accusing me of thievery, let me see your proof. Alright. <laughs> this evidence tells who you stole the walkie-talkie from. No. Two Where is she? She's not here. Where's Shipley's walkie-talkie hasn't been found. <gasps> oh, crap! Did I ever look at the rest of this? Oh yeah, because it was like the pictures. Uh, that's probably it. According to the defendant's statement, Mr. Shipley talked to her on his walkie-talkie before his death. However, no walkie-talkie was found near the victim's body. Bingo! Ah, me thinks the police just didn't look hot enough. Besides, the captain's walkie-talkie wasn't broken. Be that not right? So this walkie-talkie has nothing to do with mine. Has everything to do with it. <laughs> the victim fell to his death. It's quite possible his walkie talkie broke in the fall. You stole fizzy lifting drinks after the victim's death, didn't you, Mr. Rhymes? Silence. You bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be washed and sterilized, so you get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! If you claim the walkie talkie belonged to the victim, that really hurt my throat. Give me your evidence. That's what I just did! Certainly, I plan on doing just that. Please look at these tooth marks here on the walkie-talkie. Tooth marks? Oh yeah, as I see them. The victim's walkie-talkie was a keepsake that used to belong to Azra Summers, who died a year ago. These tooth marks were left by Orla when she carried Miss Summers in her mouth. Uh-oh. But does Mr. Shipley's walkie-talkie... Mr. Rhyme's walkie-talkie is still unaccounted for. Which means he could have used it to command the Orca after all. I'm afraid so. That's not all, Your Honor. The only one who could have taken the walk victim's walkie-talkie is the culprit himself. So what you gonna do about it? The fact that Marlon Rhymes had the victim's walkie-talkie is proof that he murdered Jack Shipley. We gotcha. We gotcha, mister. Here it is. Let's do it. Let's see that breakdown. And so shortly after you transformed so drastically. Oh, maybe he's too tough to break down. Not so fast, Mr. Lord. What? What? This walkie-talkie be mine, says I. And how do you explain the tooth marks on it? I put those there myself. I've had many to run in with that orca myself. Arr. She bit me more than once and me walkie-talkie too. Evidence of our fights are coughed here into me body. I do see that. <laughs> My goodness, I can clearly see the tooth mark scars on your skin. What? Are those really scars from being bitten by Orla? <laughs> oh, here he goes again. You want answers? I got some meat. These scars from Orlo, that's great! 
Them girl can't put up a nasty fight. That orc up hit me and left me scarred. I had a wreck to protect and my dick was hard. But as a lawyer, I win. Just being frank. Nola, heck, take it to the bank. Or you get the plank. Yeah, whatever. Can't let him run this show. I have to find a way to prove the walkie-talkie belonged to the victim. And you can forget about fingerprints. I always keep me walkie-talkie clean and polished. This man had everything worked out before he even took the stand. But I won't give up. There has to be a way. Oh, Mr. Wright, I found something interesting. The tooth marks on the walkie-talkie. Don't you anything funny about them? Funny? Funny how? Something is different about them compared to the other tooth marks we've seen. Hmm. The only other ones I remember are the ones on the practice dummy. This is a tiny difference. Might not even mean anything. <laughs> right now, we need to consider every possibility we can, no matter how small. Is it really the missing tooth? If I can figure out what's different about the bite marks, maybe I can somehow prove Rhymes' walkie-talkie actually belonged to the victim. Think, Phoenix. You can turn everything around right here and now. Okay, so those bite marks are from a year ago, then maybe it was a year ago that he was missing a tooth and he recently got a filling. Because what dentist wouldn't want to do that? Time to review the facts we have so far. With the intent of killing Orla, Rhymes drained the soap stage pool. But Rhymes failed to kill Orla, and instead he tried to pin Shipley's murder on Orla. In order to manipulate Orla, Rhymes must have used a cell phone and a walkie-talkie. But the walkie-talkie Rhymes has is broken. I think it's the victim's walkie-talkie, the one he kept as a memento of Azra Summers. I have to find a way to prove that it's indeed the victim's walkie-talkie. Hmm, the orca's tooth marks, or the victim's fingerprints. The orca's tooth marks. Nice. We have two pieces of evidence with tooth marks, the walkie-talkie and the dummy. What's striking about these two pieces of evidence, the tooth marks are different. I look closely, I see two different bite mark patterns. Two variations, huh? Wasn't there a trick of Orla's that had two different variations as well? The show song. What does that have to do with it? A year ago, the Orca's song and teeth marks were different from what they are now. What can be the cause of these two inconsistencies? What's behind the fact that the Orca's tooth marks and song were different a year ago? New teeth grew in. It was a different Orca! She learned a new song. She could have learned a new song. That wouldn't explain the tooth marks. New teeth grew in. That would explain the song. It was a different orca? Uh, okay. I'll try it. I'll bite. Oh my god. They're two different orcas. Yeah, of course there's two different orcas. You think I'm the only one who can do this? And if the orca a year ago wasn't Orla, it means the bite mark on the walkie-talkie isn't Orla's like Rhymes said it was. Now I can finally prove the walkie-talkie belongs to the victim. Get him, Phoenix! You got this! Mr. Wright, you appear to be lost in thought there. Is everything alright? Oh, I just realized something stupid. Astonishing, Your Honor. <laughs> and stupid. Hm. Your face is what's astonishing, right, Dono? Your rudeness is what's astonishing, Prosecutor Blackwell. The smell of my farts is what's astonishing to me. Till just now, I thought the orca at Ship Shape Aquarium a year ago and Orla were the same orca. But nope, there's two of these frickin' things. Two inconsistencies led me to a new fact. And that fact is that there might be two Aura Shipleys. What? Two different orcas. But that's impossible. Oh, man. Order in the court. Knock it off! Explain yourself, what is the basis for this preposterous claim? The Orca's Shadow Song a year, er, The Orca Show Song a year ago and the one now are different. I believe it's because the Orca a year ago was a different Orca. Two different Orcas, two different songs, it explains the Show Song contradiction. But what be this Bill's want to talk, I don't understand. No, you're about to. Talk about the truth, truth, that will finally catch you out in your lies. You claim that the tooth marks on the walkie-talkie were Orla's, but that's not true, is it? Damn straight it's not. 
Two different bite mark patterns on the walkie talkie and on the dummy proves this. What? Two different patterns, you say? <laughs> While I will concede there is a possibility that two different orcas exist, bite mark patterns alone are not proof enough. I want more conclusive evidence. Okay. Do I have that? So he wants to see evidence other than the bite mark patterns, does he? Other than the bite mark patterns and the songs? The orca a year ago and Orla have different songs and different teeth. Don't I have two videos on hand that can be used to compare those differences? I believe I do. Okay, well, we'll start with the, uh... So the song the video is different from the one Duplume heard. The one Duplume heard is on the phone. So, here's one. Here is the other. Oops, no. Take that! There. Please compare these two videos, one from a year ago and one recent. As discussed, the two orcas are singing two different songs. Please also pay special attention to the appearance of the two orcas' teeth. How exactly do you claim their teeth are different? Let's look for shots in the two videos where the orcas' teeth are shown. Oh wow. This is Orla in the recent video of the Swashbuckler Spectacular Pirate Show, and what a cute little thing she is. As you can see, she has all of her teeth. What a healthy smile she has. I'm a bit envious. Yeah, well, there's always dentures. Next, let's take a look at the TV phone video from a year ago. Oh my god. Hmm, yeah, a tiny bit. As you can see, the orca from a year ago has one tooth that's broken off. Poor thing. If the teeth are different, then... Holy shit, dude. Yes, if the teeth are different, then holy shit indeed. Mm-hmm. On the practice dummy, you can see Orla's uniform pattern with all teeth intact. And on the walkie-talkie, you can see that one tooth is missing from the pattern. I see it, just like the smile of the orca in last year's video. The tooth marks on the walkie-talkie were not made by the orca we know as Orla. They were made a year ago by a different orca. Two different orcas. I can't believe it. The statement that the tooth marks on the walkie-talkie were from Orla was a lie. Truth is, this walkie-talkie was stolen from the victim, Jack Shipley. Suck it. The only person who could have stolen it is... You, Marlon Rhymes. <laughs> yeah! Freaking love that angle. I love that they only show it once per case, too, on the finishing blow. You know it's over right then. You got it all wrong. It'd be all... The fault of that orca. Which one? Please don't do anything to that fish. Oh, wow. <laughs> that has got to be the most relaxing breakdown I've ever seen. And now you're in jail, like that perfectly crooked Mario. Once again, I'm too weak to help anybody. We gotta shrink now, like the Hulk, you know? Well, that was fun. Yeah, can I go home now? Well, it would appear we should hear more from the defendant about Aura Shipley. Sasha Buckler? Yes, Captain Judge? Is what Mr. Wright claims true? Are there two different orcas? I... <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you should bring this up, because there's actually three of them. What? There's three of us?! The secret that Shipshape Aquarium was hiding is about Orla, wasn't it? What the hell?! Who's farting in here?! Dr. Crab told me to focus on the orca's song. He hinted it would be a clue. Phoenix is right. The one we call Orla is the second Orla Shipley. There actually used to be two Orcas at Ship Shape Aquarium. I used to call the first Orla Shipley just Aura for short. Aura and Orla are sisters. The captain rescued them both when they got beached on the shore. But Orla was in bad shape, and the ship's doctor had to look after her for a long time. Both Orcas loved the captain, so we decided to keep them on the Ship Shape Aquarium. 
Why didn't you say anything about there being two orcas? Well, because I was embarrassed. After the accident a year ago, Aura was put down. Oh no. Oh man. Time, baby, I'm gonna tell you. What a surprising and complex tale. Did all Shipshape Aquarium employees know about this? No, just a select few of us. Mr. Rhymes, did you know about it? Of course not. Are those really bide marks? Are we gonna find that out? <laughs> tell me, Mr. Rhymes, did you plan on killing Orla from the start? Yeah, I plan to do it during the cleaning, so I drain the pool. I figured if I didn't do something about that beast, Sasha's life was in danger. Sasha trusted that orca just as much as Azra did. I wanted to protect her. I couldn't help Azra, so I felt like protecting Sasha was the least I could do. My duty. I built up my strength so I'd be ready to kill the orca. I even fought with sharks. But the captain realized my plan and tried to save the orca. Man. And that is why you killed Jack Shipley. Ah, now the report from the crime lab finally makes sense. Oh no, is this something he's been holding on to that would have just ended the case right then and there? In court yesterday, you will recall I showed you a photo of the victim lying on his back. Yeah. According to the lab, the bruise on the victim's right wrist was Rhyme's handprint. His handprint? I didn't know how it fit in with the case until I heard Rhyme's story just now. But now we can imagine the reason for it being there. Rhymes must have made the handprint when he fought with the victim over the orca. Oh man. The handprint made during a struggle. I don't care what happens to me anymore. I deserve the death penalty. You do not, dude. I get you. I get you now. I'm the one that killed the captain. Please give Sasha her not guilty verdict. <laughs> you accept your defeat well, I see. Let me be your guide to hell. <laughs> wow. Get on with the verdict of your baldness. Ooh. It seems this unprecedented trial that began with an orca as the defendant has finally come to a close. Sasha is saved. Orla is going to be so happy. So happy. Yes, yeah, she is. Yes, she is! <laughs> Sasha's not guilty verdict is coming. Why do I still have this strange nagging feeling? Ryan's handprint on the victim's right wrist. Was it really the result of a deadly struggle over the orca? Does it have anything to do with, like, the handprint on the ladder? We're gonna have to, like, match it to that or something? So we never did anything with that handprint on the ladder, did we? Very well, this court finds the defendant, Sasha Buckler. I was gonna say, like, there's too much silence in here. Who? Who could it be? It was Phoenix. Your Honor, please hold off on that verdict. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? I was about to give you the victory here. I would like to further explore this new evidence the prosecution just submitted. Holy shit, dude! I thought we were done here. I mean, not that I mind. To what complaint could you have? You're about to get your not guilty verdict. I see no need to further prolong this trial, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, we still don't know the entire truth of this case. Wow. This unnatural handprint Mr. Rhymes left on the victim's right wrist. I don't think it was the result of a fight between the two men. Not the result of a fight? Hmm. Then what do you suggest it was? Boss, what are you doing? Do you remember that evidence we found at the show stage? Evidence? What evidence? That mysterious mark might be the key to understanding the whole case. Your Honor, the defense would like to submit evidence that will expose the truth of this case. A mysterious piece of evidence that pairs with Mr. Rhymes' unnatural handprint. Okay, um, here we go. 
I'm not sure what the connection is here, though. Marlon Rhymes left behind a very unusual set of fingerprints at the so show stage. In what way were they unusual? Uh, they were right-hand prints on the left side of the ladder. Was he, like, holding the ladder with his right hand and the captain with his left? So maybe he was hanging by the ladder or something? Huh. Oh my gosh, what if the captain fell and he tried to save him and he was, like, holding... Well, no, yeah, because she said he was holding it from above, though. Looks like the ladder is being grasped from above. Exactly, Your Honor. What does that mean, though? And the handprint on the victim's right wrist shows that it was held with a powerful grip. Marlon Rides grasps the show stage ladder in an unnatural pose. Oh, no. If he was gripping the victim's wrist in this position... Gripping the victim's wrist? Then he must have been... It means Mr. Rhymes was actually... trying to save him. If we couple the unnatural handprint with the mysterious fingerprints... See that Marlon Rhymes was trying to save the victim's life. Wow. He didn't even try to like say that or anything. But that can't be. It's impossible. Why don't we ask Mr. Rhymes himself? Yeah. I hm. Mr. Rhymes. We want to hear the truth directly from you. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta hand it to you, Mr. Lawyer. You got skills. Why? Why'd you have to figure it out? It doesn't matter what happens to me anymore. I'm ready to die. So is what the defense is claiming true? The captain. He found out I drained the show stage pool. He rushed to the side of the pool, frantic to put some water in for the orca. And then, he slipped. Dude, you made a mistake. I mean, I get that, but... Just have to live with it, you know? Mr. Rhymes, you have the wrong idea about Miss Summer's death. Not even the first Aura Shipley was responsible for her dying. Aura, of her own accord, was trying to save Miss Summer's life. Look what happened to her. Huh. Ezra Summer suffered from a heart condition. She didn't tell anyone, and she performed in the pirate show anyway. She had a heart attack and died before anyone could save her. I'm sure she didn't think Aura attacked her. Nothing to avenge. That's what I was saying earlier. So I wanted to get revenge all this time for nothing. Wow. This is like half case, half character study here. 
so many different things, you know, and the little miscommunications that lead to something like this happening. <laughs> Still had a lot to offer, Mr. Rhymes. Live your life and never give up. And good luck will find you for the sake of those who are gone as well. I promise to make up for what I've done, even if it takes my whole life. Mr. Wright, Sasha, I'm going to go back to my flimsy self now, if you don't mind. It's really hard to keep these muscles moving. Oh, that was nice, that last shot. Thank you, overlay to the whole room. It's kind of epic. <laughs> well, I have seen countless trials, but never one that intended like this. I don't know how, Mr. Wright, but you always seem to manage to turn things around. <laughs> I think all this excitement has taken a few years off my life. Is that praise or a diss? <laughs> now then, this court finds the defendant, Sasha Buckler. Not guilty. And Marlon Rhymes, not guilty. And Orla, not guilty. Nobody's guilty here. Nothing happened. It was all just a big accident slash misunderstanding, but hey. At least you don't have to worry about the blame game, no mo. It's hard to even really like to keep in mind that for most people, probably playing this case was like their last one. So there's probably not gonna be anything here that like leads into case three. The real case three. And that's too bad, because I it's one of my favorite aspects of the Phoenix Wright games in general is the overarching story, not just the case by case story. So but hey, you know. Hey Pearl, congratulations on your win. I wonder if she's like in the rest of the game or if she was just like a bonus here. Thank you for all your help today, Pearls. He <laughs> all I did was have fun with Orla. Now, catch back up. Hey, yeah, I'm in the ending! Alright! I didn't think I was gonna be in the ending! Holy crap, man! Orla, I'm back! Oh, I missed you, girl! Hugs! Hugs! Oh, I'm so happy for you and Orla, Sasha. Everything turned out great. Phoenix, Athena, I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Which doesn't have a condition, thank goodness. Actually, does it? Somebody's does it. Orla and I are both really grateful you can stop with the eel crap. Oh, just putting on the mustache punch. I will now act out my gratitude with a little performance. Arr! Miss Orca Lover, don't you think you'd better take care of your health first? Yeah, she had a heart condition too. Alright, fine. I promise, no more shows until I'm better. I don't want anybody to worry about me after all. Good, I'm glad that's settled. Now. Hey buddy, Mr. Lawyer. You just had to blab every single one of the aquarium secrets, didn't you? I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Dr. Crab, I didn't mean to. Yeah, it's alright, I'm glad. It's kinda hard to tell. <laughs> Although thanks to you, they now know we're using the illegal torpedo system. But I think we'll be able to wiggle out of serious repercussions somehow. That writer lady is advocating for us, saying the law itself is to blame. She said she's going to look into getting the law changed. Wow! Go, Misty Plume! She sure is a powerhouse. <laughs> In more ways than one. There's one thing you didn't figure out, by the way. Keep this to yourself, will you? We don't want it getting out publicly. Remember that appointment I had written down on my calendar? Oh, you mean meet the captain at the Orca Pool at 7 a.m.? That note meant the Orca Pool of the Supermarine Aquarium, not Ship Shapes. What? Why are you supposed to meet there? Because there's a third Orca, Jack and I. We visited the Supermarine Aquarium once a month. Any idea why? They said something about that. To get dolphin therapy treatment? No, silly. Remember I told you? Jack and I were against putting the orca down from the start. What? You mean... We just pretended to put the first ore ship lay down. Oh, really? The Supermarine Aquarium is harboring her for us. What? Oh, so that talk about large amounts of money you were paying them. Somebody go tell Marlin, then. Or hopefully he knows, or he finds out. <laughs> Once a month, the owner and the vet disappear from this aquarium. And I came to find out that each time, a large amount of money was being paid out. So 
there you go. We were paid for Aura's care. You wouldn't believe how much fish Aura here ate. Now that it's been proven she was innocent all along, I think we can bring her back soon. Until then, keep it under your hat, okay? Yeah, if I wore one, I would definitely do that. So what was he telling you about? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> oh, I should tell her. By the way, well, I mean, I can see why you wouldn't, though. Or the ones you give her a little celebratory prize. Celebratory prize coming right up! For me, that is, not for you! <laughs> well, specifically requested that you give it to her, Phoenix. Huh, alright, fine. Let's see. What can I give her? Oh my. Uh, fish? This fish has got to be like three days old by now, you know. Here I go. Orla, it's coming a day late, but congratulations on your verdict. Now here's a halibut. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, look at it. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> wow. Oh my, he <laughs> aren't you lucky? Lucky? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that's Orla's best trick. The thank you kiss trick. Yeah, that's my thank you kiss. I know I'm not nearly as sarcastic as I was before, but you know, sometimes people change. So do, or so do orcas. Do you want to be next? I don't think it's going to happen. Well, I don't know, maybe. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I guess they chose not to tell us. And so the curtain fell on my first trial in years. I'm looking forward to the comeback of Sasha and Orla Swashbuckler Spectacular. After all, I made a comeback of my own as a lawyer. A few months later. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe they did find a way to, like, make a preview for the following case or something. I don't know. Date? Question mark. Time? Question mark. Ship Shape Aquarium? Question mark. No entrance. It's been a while since I visited Ship Shape Aquarium. Now that Sasha has recovered from her illness, she's performing today. Well, it's good. There's still some time before the show starts. I think I will wander around a bit. Do I get to, like, actually wander? Oh, hey. Hi, Phoenix. Hope you enjoyed the show today. The Olkas are excited and ready to go. Both of, bo both of them. Both of those dummies. Okay, I'm sure I'm trying Wait a minute. Did you say orcas as in plural? Huh. Yep, let me show you. Hi there, how's it going? Hi there, it's me too! I have one less tooth, but that doesn't matter. Two or less, don't tell me. Yeah, that's right, we're talking all the time. Oh, I know, that's right, we're talking all the time. Oh my god, there's so much problem going on here. Yep, you got it right. Or we're simply the first to return to Shipshape Aquarium. We need the three pirate sisters. Arr! <laughs> we need to stop the evil Scalawagly, led by Red Stash and the giant octopus. Who's playing Red Stash, I wonder? <laughs> well, I wouldn't get, want to get in the way of the rehearsal. Guess I better go. Just makes me want to mock direct, or con conduct, rather. Well, if it isn't Blue Boy, did you come for my book signing? <laughs> oh, Mr. Blue, there's a book signing? Yes, my new book is just out. It's called Ship Shape Aquarium. Don't pull the plug. <laughs> the book signing will be held here in this room. After all, the vet owes me a favor. Hmm. Yes, you got them to approve the use of the torpedo. I'm grateful. But why does she keep coming to my lab to bother me every single day? She has a crush on you. My next work will be entitled Sniper! The Penguin Lives the Best! Oh, <laughs> I thought I said loves at first, and I had to, like, correct myself awkwardly. Wow. Yeah, it's not this cacophony. Cacophony. Why am I surrounded by carping females? Gee, Dr. Crab gets all the ladies. All the single ladies. Guess I'll leave them to it. Oops, it's almost time for the show. See you later, Doc. Hey, where have you been, Daddy? Polly and Athena already went in. While we were waiting, I bought some souvenirs to take back to the village. Sorry to keep you waiting. I bet they'll love your souvenirs back home, Pearls. By the way, I hear certain someone is going to be in today's show. A certain someone. I wonder who it could be. Oh, it's almost time. The show's just about to start. I bet it's Marlin. I bet he's playing Red Stash. That was kind of what I was thinking when I asked that question earlier. I'm like, well, he's he's got to get some resolution here. I saved y'all seats, Mr. Wright. Oh, I can't believe I get to see the show again. 
I'm so happy when I dive in the pool. You better not. I think they call security. You're welcome in the pool anytime, Athena. But Red Stash is the best swimmer of all. Huh? Who have you got playing Red Stash's role? Sasha, Orla, and Orla are ready to go. Hey, I know that voice. Yep, you may know it. Marlon is back, and he's playing the role of Red Stash. Well, there you go. I mean, who else was it gonna be, really? Oh, wait, the new Swashbox is spectacular. Hope you enjoy it, me buckos. Crowd goes wild, yay. Shouldn't we be over there in the bleachers and not over here? Ah, oh, well, whatever. We got the best of you. And so, our pirates set sail for bluer seas under a sunnier sky. As for me... I set foot into the world of law once more as a full-time lawyer. Well, there you go, that's the DLC case. Oh, man. Phoenix Wright's nostalgic sweater has been unlocked. What? Nostalgic sweater. Oh my god, there's more? There's more costumes! Oh god, really? Wow. Oh my god. Freaking me out over here. Okay, well. Dual Destinies. In case three, I think I might actually, you know, try some of these outfits out. Some people are saying maybe I should do that, so I think maybe I will. Anyway. Yeah, I kept thinking that, like, the next case was gonna be case four, because I somehow un unconsciously was thinking that this was case three, and it's not. There's a real case three, and then there's two more after that, so this is a six-case game. This is a big one. But, I guess this means now we're halfway through, so... Hell yeah. Anyway, next time on Dual Destiny, we start Case 3. See you guys next time! Thank you for watching. I don't know why I'm so loud right now. Bye.